transformed by your spirit. So we give you this uh, this service and all of us today. In Jesus' name, amen.
the God of the mountain, is the God of the valley, yes. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. for bearing with us through our weaknesses, Lord. We bring a sacrifice of praise to you, Lord, even when we don't feel strong enough to do it, Lord. We're here to praise you. We're here to worship you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise no matter what's going on. And I thank you that you are the God of our mountains and, and, and when we're in the valleys, Lord. No matter what, it is well with, with us in our souls. Help us to all proclaim that today and believe it. I come against any plan of the enemy in this place right now. I pray that you soften each one of our hearts. Help us to come to you and focus on you, Lord. We set aside all distractions, Lord, as we are here to worship you. As we worship you in unity as a congregation. Thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. We're here for you, Lord. Please accept our praise and worship as an offering to you, Lord.
this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea yes and through it all through it all my eyes are on God, you are right in our midst right now. And I know that your spirit is speaking to us, God. There's no way sometimes that we can just say it is well. There's no, there's no way that, that we can look around and say it is well. But because of you, God, we can. <laughs> and it doesn't always make sense. 
And hallelujah, it doesn't have to. You are good, God, and you're moving in our lives and you're in our midst. The very, oh God. I know that you're moving and speaking today. I know that you're healing today, God. I know that you're calling us deeper today. say right now but I just feel that we need to just sit and settle in your presence and I know it's hard for some God but you're moving right now and so I'm just going to sit for another another couple seconds God and just sit in your presence right now if God is uh, speaking with you or working with you and he's bringing a word to you then please feel free but God's doing something right now that uh, he's telling me to shut up love you and we thank you God I, I feel one of those awe moments and I, and I just uh, one of those holy moments God where you're just so thick in our presence that it's just just upset our plans God <laughs> upset our plans a breakthrough God God we pray that you would just uh, continue to let your transformative spirit be in this place God that you would just change the atmosphere break the barriers of our heart and our minds that are holding us back God break through like never before God in our situation in our life and in this place right now God we are just saying we're a people that want to see you move we're desperate for you God so do it please you're already doing it and we're just saying yes God yes There's times like this, God, when we know that you're so real and that you're right here comforting us right now. Thank you for that. Thank you that you know the plans you have for us and you do not give up on us. Thank you that you love us and care about us and never stop calling us back to you. Thank you, Jesus, for being born on this earth for us right now. In this moment as we stand here right now to save our very souls, God, to rescue us from the darkness and redeem us and call us your own. We receive that fully today, God. And I know that there's things in here and there's people ill and there's all kinds of things on our hearts, but God, you meet us where we are at and you transform us to look like you. You take our burdens, God. You heal our hearts, God. You take our fear. You free us from bondage. You are good, mighty God. Thank you. And we praise your name today, God. Thank you for being in this place. Thank you for always meeting us where we're at. Thank you for always being with us. We praise your name. Amen. Well, um, yeah, as we get ready to, you know, go to the next level, right, we're going to look back on uh, how far God has brought us, you know, and, I, and I'm excited and ready for that. Um, I told you last week, you know, 
that uh, the enemy's going to attack you and, uh, you know, he's going to make it hard for you. And, and if you're trying to follow God, we talked about you're going to have blockades. You know, we talked about when, when you make a decision to follow God and trust him with your finances, things are going to happen, right? And uh, I'm telling you, things always are like that. And, and no one is exempt from it. And I stood here last week and said, I struggle with that too, you know. And uh, I told you different methods that I did to try to continue to do that. And so uh, once again, you know, I give online. I, I started here and, and the push pay app, 77977, um, text NAS family give, I guess is how it works. And uh, it start prompting you. And, and that works for me because immediately when I, when I, you know, we get paid, we give it and uh, I'm like, all right, God, this is good. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and it may not be like that for you, but it, but it is for me. And, and the point I was trying to make is all the plans God has. The more we move closer to God, the more we're going to be attacked. And, and I want us to be a church that's fully committed to God. And so I don't check. I don't know uh, what, what, you know, where you guys stand and how you give and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't know. Um, we get statements at the end of the month to kind of tell us where we are financially. Um, and as we grow into this next step, you know, it's going to take all of us First, before we even talk gifts and finances, it's all of us having our heart, right? And every time that I start talking to, to God, you know, like, God, in ministry, I want to do this, and God, I want to do this, and he always leads me and directs me to look at my own heart, right? And so there's a connection to how we are with Jesus and how we are with the rest of our lives, right? We can't be, we can't minister if our hearts are not right, and so every time I'm like, God, uh, what do you want us to do in the ministry, and how do you want us to move, you know, he shows me my heart, <laughs> and so uh, I, I think it's just a good reminder that when it comes to gifts and finances, I mean, it starts with the heart. You know what I mean? God's looking at our heart. And as we give our heart to him, it starts manifesting itself in every other part of our lives, right? And so uh, gifts and finances, uh, talents, all those things, I want us to be a church sold out for God, desperate for God. And this is a part of it, okay? And so uh, just pray about it. Like I always say, pray. God is going to lead you. I don't have to give you a persuasive argument. God will do it. <laughs> if you seek him, he's going to show you. And uh, man, and when, when you're where he wants you to be, that's when you're blessed and no matter what circumstance. So that's when it, it is well with my soul. Amen. So God, we thank you and we praise your name. We uh, just um, are excited about the big plans you have for us, but you're excited about our hearts. <laughs> you have plans for us and, and all kinds of great things, but really it begins with our heart and how we are submitted to you, how we give ourselves to you and how we look at all gifts that come from you and how that affects our life and our living and our choices and our gifts and our finances, God. We are kingdom builders because you build our heart and change our lives. And that manifests itself in everything else. So, Lord, I pray that you would continue to guide us, lead us, and direct us to just surrender ourselves to you fully. I pray that as people uh, give, God, that you would put it on their heart to give the way that you want them to. And that it would be steps of surrender that would lead to freedom, God. This, we don't need another attachment to this world. We need to be fully devoted to you. And I want to be. And, I, and you want us to be. And so as we're working that out in real life, bless us. Keep us. Bless the gift and the giver, God. Move the way only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the things that happened was our HDMI cable died this morning. And so with that, now we either had video or we had audio, right? <laughs> so we had to choose. And, uh, you know, of course, we wanted everybody to worship together. So that was where we, what we chose. Um, so if anybody's thinking about a 50-foot HDMI, <laughs> please <laughs> look at one at Walmart and we'll be okay. Um, all right. So this week is week three of our Advent series. I've been trying <laughs> to uh, um, watch Christmas movies, I guess. We, me and my wife put on one last night, you know, just um, trying. Our tree is, uh, we decorated our yard yesterday <laughs> with lights, and we have a, a Mickey and a penguin that are like laying sideways, you know, kind of thing. And uh, we have our tree out of the shed into the house. So we're getting closer and closer to, uh, to Christmas, you know. Uh, one year, we, on the 24th, we just put a tree topper out, you know, because we got so busy, you know. And uh, that's just not what I wanted this year. But uh, God's good, and it's been a great time. And this is uh, week three, and Graves into Gardens. I know that uh, we, you know that song in and out by now, right? <laughs> not only is it on the radio, but we're singing it every week. And to me, that is 
what this season's about and what I wanted to remind people, you know, that because of this season, because of Jesus coming to earth, because of the baby, you know, that he's born a baby into a man, because of that, we, we can be changed, right? That we're saved, we're free. And uh, I just want this year, more than any other year, for us to experience our King Jesus. And I think we need that. You know, I want us to understand and accept and live into the reason that he came. And how our lives are changed now because of it. Jesus, our Savior, God with us, Emmanuel, born into a man, into our world for us. It changed everything, right? It changed everything. And he came to our rescue. And I don't ever want to not only take that for granted, but I want to receive that new this year, you know? And so I want to look at Isaiah 61 today. Because I think Isaiah 61 points to the fact that Jesus is the fulfillment of our joy. Jesus is the fulfillment of our joy. He's the cause of our joy. And this past year, and in the past years, there's a, this event, and it's called a Blue Christmas. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. And I've always really wanted to put one on because there's a lot of times in this time of year that people will just go through it with the fake smile, and we're supposed to feel joyous, and they don't, and they feel guilty that they don't. And there's something called a Blue Christmas. And it's an event that... Um, it's just people being honest about where they are this Christmas. They're like, man, I just don't feel it. Um, we're experiencing loss and all those kind of things. And so they kind of make room and space for people to deal with those emotions. Because everywhere we go, we're supposed to feel joy and peace. But for some, we feel loss and struggle and seasonal depression. For some, Christmas is just a hard time of year. And being honest about those feelings, it always will lead them to God, right? If you're just honest with those feelings sometimes, God, I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. I want to. I want to praise you. I, I want that, but I'm just not feeling it. And, and if you provide a space for people to, to, to deal with those and ultimately lead them back to God. And I think we need a space to work that out. A space to give our worries and our hurts and our trust to God. Because again, if, if we give those to God, it's going to lead to a joy. It's going to lead to a peace in your circumstance. And I believe that's what his word says. And a lot of us this year, um, we've seen it in our family. We're spending it without family, the holidays. We're spending the holidays without family. And a lot of us are experiencing diminished resources and income. And for some, this holiday season has been hard. And maybe, you know, doing the tree, you're just doing it out of going through the motions. You're just uh, doing what we're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, like I talked to those people yesterday and they go, yeah, man, life's been hard. <laughs> life's been hard. But this morning, I want to remind you that Jesus is the fulfillment and the cause of our joy, Caleb. Jesus is the fulfillment and the cause of our joy. Um, we read in Luke 4. When Jesus began his ministry, right after being filled with the Spirit in Luke 4, right after being tempted, he went to Nazareth, and he went home, and he stood in that synagogue, and he stood there, and they give him this, this scroll to read, and he read from Isaiah 61, and said, the scripture, this is what he said, the scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled in me this very day, fulfilled, completed, paid all that was promised the covenant kept in jesus all of god's plans for a savior for restoration for help for peace would be fulfilled fulfilled completed paid covenant met promise kept so jesus told all that were listening that he was the messiah he was the savior and that the joy of the lord was brought to us all and it's been fulfilled in him the angels told the shepherd in Luke 2, we bring good news that will bring great joy to all people. Jesus is the fulfillment and cause of our joy. And so we're going to look at Isaiah 61, Caleb. And, um, but do that the whole time. I'm sorry right now. <laughs> Isaiah 61. Um, and this is, this is the scroll that Jesus opened and read and said, this has been fulfilled in me. And here it is. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God to comfort all who mourn. 
and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. In this scripture, we see a promise, right? Good news for the poor, comfort for the brokenhearted, good news for the captives, and prisoners will be freed and released. Good news for those who are mourning, who feel afflicted and forgotten by God. The day of the Lord's favor has come. The day of the Lord's favor has come. They were at a place at this time where they needed the Lord's favor. Because if you, if you know, what, you know in, in time of history, they had turned their backs on God. They were worshiping false idols and they were chasing wickedness and God reminded them again and again and again and they would turn back for a minute and then they would turn away again. They turned their back on God and God ended up taking their promised land away. The land God had for them and said, hey, this is the land I have for you. I'm making a covenant with you. This is, this is going to be you and it's going to be so awesome and it's going to be great. And then, and then they kept turning away. And they kept just uh, looking back at that promise as a scourge and and they kept just following other idols and, and not worshiping God. And he took all that he promised them. He took it away from them. And he had enemies come in their land and made them slaves in Babylon. Can you imagine that? The promises that, that, that we talk about, the promises that are here for God, from God to you, that when you're experiencing that in your life and then you start pulling away and turning away and then God takes that away from, the, from you, your joy, your peace, your salvation, it all becomes something secondary, right? Because you want the world instead. And, there, and really, when you think about it and we all live it, there's a price to pay when we start following the world and coming away from God, Right? And, and, and it, 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 it's a jeopardy to our peace. It's a jeopardy to our life with God. It's a jeopardy to, to so many things that we find ourselves in. The promise that they had, this wonderful promise that God led them through. They could see God moving. He led them into this promise. And because of their actions, he withdrew that and let the enemies, withdrew his protection, let the enemies come in and take them captive. They were hopeless. They were in despair. They were slaves. They couldn't even worship in the temples even if they wanted to because now they were slaves in another land. And God used this horrible event and drew them back to him. Suddenly they were upset and they were mournful. Suddenly they were crying out to God and they wanted to be restored. Why have you done this, God? Why am I in this place? You took all that you promised. Now we're slaves and, and we can't even worship. But they didn't even want to worship before, right? God changed their heart through this terrible thing. They were in exile for 70 years. And right towards the end of that, they get this word from Isaiah, from God to his people, that, hey, the day of the Lord's favor has come. And they're looking at their lives in shackles and slaves and not even in a promised land. The day of the Lord's favor has come. He's going to give you a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyful blessing instead of mourning, a festive praise instead of despair. He would restore their righteousness and make them strong like mighty oaks. Because when, when, when you're at that moment and you feel all the weight of the world and you, the weight of your decisions, you do not feel like a mighty oak. <laughs> And he said, I'm going to make you like a mighty oak that the Lord himself has planted. The day of the Lord's favor has come. And hundreds of years later, Jesus stood there in the synagogue and said, the scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled in me this very day. The day of the Lord's favor has been fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment and the cause of our joy. <laughs> this is why this year our series is called Graves to Gardens, because we need God to move and restore our joy. I want to see God move and restore in us a clean heart and a steadfast spirit. This year we may feel in bondage. This year we may feel loss. We may feel in lack. We may be in mourning. But this year is a year of, Lord's, of the Lord's favor. Why? Why? Why this year above all years? Every year is the year of the Lord's favor since Jesus. Every year since Jesus, it's been the year of the Lord's favor, starting with the baby in a manger on that silent night. That's why it means so much. 
That's why it's a big deal. And it's okay, let me tell you, to receive the joy of the Lord today. As a matter of fact, he's inviting you to receive his joy today. He is inviting you in the work of restoring his joy to the world. And so the Lord gave them this word. While everything was in ruins, he gives them this word. And we're continuing in verse 4. And it says, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. The Lord said, they will rebuild. The Lord is telling you, you will rebuild. (laughs) Not, I, God, am going to rebuild. He said, they will rebuild. They will renew. You will renew. He said, the day of the Lord's favor has come. I will restore them, and I'm going to bring them a joy even though they can't see it. I'm going to restore your heart and your mind. I'm going to plant you. I'm going to set you on a course. I'm going to bring life back to you. I will restore your joy. I will bring praise to your heart. I will bring righteousness back to you. I will restore you because the day of the Lord's favor has come. His blessings are coming back on you so that you can rebuild the ancient ruins, right? So that you can rebuild your faith. So that you can restore the places that the enemy has taken and have been long since devastated. He restores your joy. He plants you. He fulfills you. He, he puts you on the right course so that you can make, let him change what's been stolen, right? So you can restore the places long since devastated. So you can pick up the pieces and begin to rebuild with that peace, with that power, with that provision and that direction of God through the power of his Holy Spirit. Because you know as well as I do the problem in life, things happen and we try to fix it ourselves, right? And it goes to pot. Here's the truth. He will restore you so that you can rebuild so you can revive what's been destroyed, to turn the graves into gardens. God is restoring your joy so you can bring that joy, provision, and power, and peace into your life. And that's how he transforms our circumstance. That's how he takes what was dead and makes it alive. That's how he restores marriages and hurts. That's how he restores our minds and our hearts. He sets us on a course to take us, take back, to take back in his name what the enemy has destroyed to rebuild what he broke and restore what has been broken. Jesus said, the scripture you have just heard has been fulfilled in me this very day. The day of the Lord's favor has been fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of our cause and the cause of our joy. And so you may look at ruins in your life. You may look at lack in your life. You may look at how different things are this year. You may have your hands on the broken pieces of your life, of your circumstance. You might picture ruins, but listen today, because of Jesus, this is the day of the Lord's favor. It sounds like something you would hear in church, (laughs) because it's true. But we walk out of here, and we don't receive that, folks. We don't receive that. This is the day of the Lord's favor because of Jesus. We're standing in that right now. Right? This is another promise that he's given us. And we could be in that same place where we, just like the exiles, oh, I don't need God. I got everything under control. I don't need this. I'm okay. And then calamity hits and we're like, God, where were you? Now I'm in bondage. But he says, hey, look, I'm going to restore you. This is the day of the Lord's favor. We need to hear that today. Jesus is the fulfillment and the cause of our joy. In Jesus, our joy and our salvation are fulfilled. And you might see ruins, but he already has plans to restore them. So trust him. You might see the hurt. He sees the healing, and he wants that for your life because that's why he came. That's why he endured. That's why he came as a man, as a baby, grown into a man, making decisions that would affect our life, right? Making decisions to continue to carry on and be a sacrifice for us. You might feel lost and you might feel in bondage. You might have fear, but Jesus came to bring us life. And it started that day in that manger. (laughs) And Jesus proclaimed it in the synagogue that day. 
the scripture you had just heard has been fulfilled in me this very day. The day of the Lord's favor has been fulfilled in Jesus. And that means you can have joy in him today. He is the fulfillment and the cause of our joy. He is our joy. He is our salvation. He is our all in all today. He will restore you so that you can rebuild and reclaim what the enemy has destroyed in Jesus' name. And listen, it's been a hard year for a lot of people. It was a hard year for those in exile, a hard 70 years. And look at this word, this promise for them. Mighty oaks that he planted. And as you receive that promise today, know that is what brings joy. As you receive that promise and, and, and you receive that today, knowing that he's going to take care of your circumstance, no matter what you see around you, know that he has plans for you to restore you and to, to help you to rebuild and a righteousness. That's where you receive joy. That's what brings joy. And if we look at verse 10, it says, I am overwhelmed with joy. Joy in the Lord my God. I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God. For he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped in me the robe of righteousness. I'm a, like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. The sovereign Lord will show justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring with plants springing up everywhere. He brings a joy, a joy that doesn't make sense, a joy that doesn't look at what's happening, but is anticipating what God's going to do, a joy unspeakable. We are overwhelmed with joy, and you may not be feeling that today, but know the day of the Lord's favor has come, and you can. For he has dressed me in salvation, draped me with a robe of righteousness. It doesn't say I'm filled with joy because he fixed my whole problem. It doesn't say that, that, you know, and he does. He helps us and he heals us. But it doesn't say that we're filled with joy because he met our every need. It doesn't say you're filled with joy because he, you know, destroyed all of our enemies. It says we are filled with joy because of righteousness and salvation, which is who we were made for, right? We were made to be in a right relationship with God. We were made to be clothed in his righteousness and be free from sin. That's what we're made for. That's where our joy comes from. That changes everything. Healing in our hearts and our minds, it changes everything. Faith in God in all circumstances changes everything. Because Jesus is the fulfillment of our joy. (sighs) Because he brings salvation and righteousness to the lost. Because he revives dead hearts. Because he turns graves into gardens in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. That's why God with us, Emmanuel, is a big deal. That's the reason we celebrate. That's that's why Jesus was saying that scripture that you heard has been fulfilled in me. (laughs) This very day, that scripture has been fulfilled in me. Because the day of the Lord's favor has been fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of our cause and cause of our joy. He wants us to receive that today. He wants you to know that today. He wants to give you that joy today. The day of the Lord's favor has come. And I, and I, I don't know where you stand. But even today, the Lord wants to bring joy to you. I don't know how you feel this Christmas, like I said. I don't know if you're like, man, I need it to be different. I I need, I I just, we just need something different this year. (laughs) Aren't you ready to leave those ashes for beauty? To turn mourning into dancing? Like the song says, Jesus, you're the only one who can. And so uh, we're going to close in song today. I must have got excited, man, (laughs) because I burned through some pages. But God's really put this on my heart, you know, and I just think we need the joy of the Lord today. So often we run from joy and we sit out living the life God has for us and we fight to keep the things that hurt us. But listen, the day of the Lord's favor has come. I want you to hear that today. The day of the Lord's favor has come and it's for you. 
His promises are for you. To free the captives. To comfort the brokenhearted. For forgiveness and grace, it's all found in Jesus and it leads us to a joy in all circumstances. A joy that is for you today. His promises are for you today. So as we... uh, I'm going to close in prayer and close in a song. I'd love to pray with you. Um, We're a family, guys, you know. I just, I don't want you to miss the joy of the Lord. And you, like you might say, you might feel far from it, but this might be a time, God, I want that and need that. I need the year of the Lord's favor. I need to know, remind me who you are in my circumstance. like it'd be okay. Let's do that. Let's sing it again. Is that okay? I just pray that you would continue to move in this place, God. I pray that you would lead us to a joy that doesn't make sense, God. That we can receive the year of your favor today, God. I pray that, God, that you would, uh, I know you're working on our hearts and I know you're in this place. I pray, God, that you would heal. That you would guide, God. That you would continue to call us, God, to respond. To not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea Yes And through it all, through it all My eyes are on
are, Lord. Oh, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is well with my soul. Oh, it is. God, we thank you. I pray, God, that we can receive that joy today, God, that we can step into that favor today, that, that a promise that's already fulfilled for us right now. And Lord, I know that the enemy attacks, God, and I know there's things that we're dealing with that, that seem like, well, that steal that joy from us, God, and they lead us away from you. And today I pray, God, that we can step into your favor, that we can step into your joy, God, that we can surrender to you and just say it is well because you're so good and we believe it more than we believe anything else. You come through again and again and again, God, you come through and you never will stop. And so we say it is well with our soul because you're so good. You've saved us. You've changed us. You have nothing to prove, God. You've already paid it all. Yet you still come and meet us where we're at. You still come and meet our needs. You still give us the power by your spirit to endure, to endure <laughs> and to rebuild. The strength and the boldness to say, God has it and I'm going to carry on. There is a joy. God, you, 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 trade, you have us to trade in our ashes for joy, our mourning for dancing. And it's not because you meet our needs. It's because of who you are and what you're doing and what you've done. Lord, let this Christmas be a joyful Christmas. Let us receive our King. Let this day be different, God. Transform our minds and our hearts, God. Have your way. Please move. Please change the atmosphere. Please, God, bless our children as they're on the, on the band trip. Be in our families this week, God, as we get closer to Christmas. Let it be a joyful walk and journey to receive our King, God. Hear our cry and fill us with your spirit. We love you, Lord, and we need you. It's in Jesus' name we ask blessings, provision, power in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, look, we love you guys. So glad to be a part of the church family. Um, this Wednesday, you know, just come and uh, we'll have our Christmas party. Just... Uh, just settle in this week, guys. Just settle in and receive the joy of the Lord. Be blessed. Amen.